Okay, today we're going to take a look at thermal mass. It's generally thought of as a good thing in the green building industry that you, you see it all the time, you know, add some thermal mass into it and it stabilises the temperature. In this example, we're going to take a look at my dome, which has a six inch concrete slab on the ground floor. There's a hundred millimetres of polystyrene insulation underneath that slab so that the heat doesn't go down into the ground. And the rest of the building has about 200 millimetres of insulation everywhere else. The principle behind having a large thermal mass is that as your building transfers heat to the outside, uh, which all buildings do, um, it just depends on the level of insulation that you have. Uh, the heat slowly radiates out into the cold environment at night, but your thermal mass has a store of heat which releases into the building. This effectively keeps the building warmer for longer. However, there's a bit of a problem uh, that most people don't realise about thermal mass. Uh, if we take a longer term cold spell and a passively heated building so you don't have any other any form of heating in the building what happens is that the cold outside eventually leaches into the building so your building gets colder and colder and of course um, it get your thermal mass gets colder and colder and colder as well so if you have a prolonged period of cold weather and dull weather um, your thermal mass uh, tends to work as a store of cold rather than a store of heat so when the building heats up sorry not the building when the uh, the weather heats up outside effectively your the building is now really insulated and your thermal mass is cold and your building's cold and you've got good insulation so it acts more like a fridge freezer than it does a cozy warm environment that's the theory anyway um now I took some uh, temperature readings inside my dome and outside over a week uh, just to illustrate um, how what kind of effect this can have. Uh, the blue line is um, temperature in the dome and the red one is outside temperature. So you can see uh, the week starts here, this is about a week's worth of data. Um, we've got 10 degrees difference. Uh, the dome's totally unheated, totally passive, no additional heat whatsoever. So this is the, naturally how uh, the temperature difference between the dome. So it's it's based on the sunshine that comes in the window. There is no extra heat added. So we start we start off and um, obviously temperature drops. Um, this is this is the midnight mark. So in in between here is uh, midday, and you can see that. Um, after a cold start in the morning, by midday, the temperature shoots up uh, to near the same as the dome. Uh, midnight again, temperature drops off uh, to almost its coldest point just after midnight, and then it shoots up again. But if you notice in the dome, the, the rise is slightly after the rise, so it takes a wee while. This is the um, uh, thermal mass is slower to warm up than it is uh, that's why you get the temperature doesn't start dropping in the dome for two or three hours after it started dropping outside uh, then we go along like this but you can you also notice that the the dome temperature is constantly um, tracking towards out, the average outside temperature we start with big variations but you know 14 12 13 14 degrees here uh, we don't get the the maximum we get is five degrees over here, and you can see that the dome tracks the temperature tracks down slowly. Um, the sharp rise of the outdoor temperature is is being um, evened out by good insulation and the thermal mass in the building. But what I really want to show you is this point here, over here, where we had a cold night, in, you know, getting down to minus two, minus three. Uh, the dome's holding temperature quite nice and then just slowly tracking towards that but it's getting down to about five degrees this is the uh, it did here as well but um, 
what happened next was the temperature went up outside uh, up to almost 15 degrees but the domes are full 5 degrees colder than outside at this point here so at this point here um, it was warmer outside than it was in the dome so in conclusion having a large amount of thermal mass although it does stabilize the temperature in the building uh, it doesn't add, add any efficiency however if you can get some heat into the slab by using hot water pipe something like that you can increase the temperature differential and this is much more useful than relying on any kind of passive heat going into the slab. My takeaway from this would be if you're going to go to the expense of putting large amounts of thermal mass into a building shove some heating pipes of some sort in so that you can actively heat that thermal mass which will give you a far better performance. As always thanks for watching um, I'll put that temperature chart back up again uh, in case you find it as interesting as I do and I might try and get something done uh, temperature data with the heated underfloor that I currently have. Ooh, uh, if you've got any questions just shove them down in the comments. I'll see you later.